Welcome to Illusionist. Get ready to learn some great sleight of hand. With just a little bit of practice, you'll be able to entertain and amaze people in any situation. And here's Brad Christian, the creator of Illusionist. Hi, guys. In this introduction, we're going to tell you some things that will help you go about learning magic. For example, if you are doing magic for someone, you want to actually believe that what you're doing is real magic. Because if you believe it, you'll create that for everyone else. You know, for example, if I reach out with an empty hand and I grab something, we don't know what it is, but if I believe there's something in there, then I can reach in and just suddenly produce it out of nowhere. But I have to believe that what I'm doing is magic and then everyone else will too. When you decide to learn a trick, really learn it. Practice it many times before doing it for anyone else. In fact, try it in front of a mirror to see what looks best. At Illusionist, we pack a lot of information and data into every video that we produce. So you want to make sure that you watch the video over and over and over, because every time you watch it, you're going to pick up a new detail or a new thing to learn. When you're ready, join Ninja. It's part of our site for members only that teaches you the art of illusion at an accelerated pace. It covers many fine details that we don't have time to get into now, and it will teach you the best moves and street magic around, bar none. Now when you think you've got everything down, including what you're going to say, do your tricks, practice it for someone who's supportive. I used to have someone I did it for who was very supportive, and I'd do tricks for this person over and over and over and over again. Was that your mother, Brad? That was my mother, yeah. And remember, the magician's honorary code. Because people are going to want to know how you did it, and it's going to be tempting to tell them. But a magician never, ever tells their secrets. Okay, we'll let you get to the tricks now. And as you're watching, you'll see that first we show you the tricks as done for a live audience, so you can get used to how it's done. And then we show you the explanation and go over all the key points with you. Keep in touch with us. We'd love to hear how you're doing. And join Ninja. It's really going to help to take your magic to a new level, including teaching you all the new street magic, the best stuff around. Okay? Have a great time. You've stepped into a new realm of the internet. Illusionist is an extraordinary site that allows you to learn the latest street magic as you've seen on TV. It's sleight of hand at the touch of a button. Watch this. I love magic. I'm really fascinated by magic. Right. I saw this thing on television the other day with uh, ashes. Oh, yeah, Have you yeah, seen yeah. That? Uh huh, uh huh. Do you know how to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Show me. You want me to do it now? Yeah, yeah, do it. Okay. Um, I've actually never done it before, but I know the principle behind it. I can do it. Let's see. Um, we got a pack of cards here. We'll do it this way. Okay. Look, we'll mix them up a little bit. We just have to pick a card at random. Let's say uh, here. Let's move this here. Go ahead and just cut the cards anywhere. Okay, good. We will mark the spot where you cut it right there for a minute. This, uh, this thing, I've never done it before, but it was actually, uh, it's actually based on a principle of uh, voodoo. You know, they still Ooh. practice voodoo? No, I it's don't. from ancient voodoo, but they still uh -huh. practice it in uh, Haiti and uh, I think uh, New Orleans uh -huh. and uh, probably LA. If, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at your card. We've marked the spot where you right. cut. Look at your card. Okay. You can show it to the camera. Got that? Yeah. Okay, put it back down. We'll square all those up. Your card is now lost in the deck. We're not okay. even going to touch that again. It's just so that you can be thinking of a card, okay? okay. Take this. Okay. I want you to write the image of that card on the paper. Okay. I won't look. Okay. I'm not looking. Okay. I'm over okay. here. And write an image just to help get it into your mind. Okay. Further etch it into your mind. Okay. Fold that up completely. Okay. okay. We are going to burn this. So you've got the card, right? You're thinking of the card? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so it's just about out. There we go. Okay. Pick an arm. 
You want that one? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Do you have the card in your mind? Yes. You're thinking of a card and you've got it in your mind? Yes. Picture that card. Okay. Watch. Look, that's looking like a three, and that right there is actually looking like an S. If I was hard pressed, it's kind of hard to tell because sometimes uh -huh. it doesn't work all the time. Uh -huh. But that's I would exactly say your card right. was the three, three of spades. That's exactly right. Was that it? Yes. Yes. Very cool. Cool. Wow. I wish I could do it on this arm too. <laughs> it's there too. Wow. You've got the three of spades. You've turned me into the three of spades. <laughs> First, let's deal with how you get the name of the card to show up on your arm. Here's how you do it. It's very, very simple, as all good magic is. Okay, you take a little piece of soap. In this case, I bought a bar of ivory soap, and I just cut a piece off of it, so it's got a little bit of an edge there. And that's what you're going to use to dip it into a little water, get it a little wet, and then write the name on your arm. In doing this, what happens is the area that you've written with the soap causes the ashes to stick to your arm in the shape or in the letter or the number that you've written on your arm. So in this case, let's say we're going we're gonna to use the uh, three of spades here. So in this case, you get it a little bit wet. I'm doing this left-handed, but you're going to go three. Write that on. We'll do spades, just S. S. Now, while that's drying, let's deal with how you make the person pick the card that you want them to pick. Very great method of doing this. It's called a force in magic. You're forcing a card, but it looks completely at random. You're going to start with the card that you want on the top of the deck. In this case, we've got the three of spades. You're going to say to someone, this is a you know standard deck of cards. You can borrow it if you're at somebody's house. Borrow a deck of cards. Just make sure that you get the three of spades to the top while you're looking through it and saying, is there a joker here? Pull out the three, put it on top and say, okay, we're good. You tell them this. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to cut the cards anywhere you want. Put the cut right there. And then you say, okay, look. We'll mark the spot that you cut right there, okay? And you've got that marked. You turn it crosswise so that they can see that. You talk a little bit about the spirit world, how you've been experimenting with it, how you're able to occasionally call up things to happen inside yourself. You ask them if they've ever heard of stigmata, which is the, uh, you know, with Christ that made the, you know, the, the things appear on the wrist and everything. Just ask the question, have you ever heard of that? You just imply that these kind of things can go on in yourself. Then you come back to the cards and you say, okay, let's take the card that you cut to and you pull this top part off and you say, let's, let's look at it. Except you have them look at it. You say, don't show it to me, but you look at it. They pick it up and they look at it. And what have we got there? We've got the three of spades. How did that happen? Now watch this. It's on top, okay? You tell them, cut the cards. Watch the three of spades. It's on top. There it goes. You say, we're going to mark the exact spot that you cut to just by turning the cards crossways. And it's done. People forget the location of the up, the down. They just know that that half should go on top of that half because that's the way you do it in a game of cards. You cut, you put that half on top. You've crossed it so they know that's where I cut to. By the time you finish talking, no one's going to remember up from down, down from up. You take it off. And you say, look at the card that you cut to. And they're going to look at that card, and it's going to be the three of spades. And that is a beautiful optical illusion of the way to force a card on somebody. It's one of the best and one of the simplest. You can have them shuffle the cards, whatever. doesn't matter. You leave the cards aside. You're going to have them say, okay, don't show me, but write the name of your card on the paper. 
give them a cocktail napkin or a piece of paper, it doesn't matter. They write it on, tell them to fold it up so you can't see it, and then you're just going to take a lighter, you're going to light it, you're going to put it in an ashtray, let it burn and get the ash. All you want is the ash from that, okay? One of the best ways to do it, by the way, is just to get an ashtray. You get an ashtray from another table, or if you're in a house and people are smoking, great, you've already got your ashes right there. Let's pretend, let's leave that aside, that we've already got the ash. You've got this on here, you say, look, sometimes I can make this happen. It doesn't always work, and sometimes you can barely see it, but uh, which arm will I, okay, I don't, this arm. Sometimes I use my stomach. You can tell them whatever. Make it up. Be an actor. This is your presentation right here. You dip in and you take some of the ashes and you just start rubbing it on your arm like so. And what you're going to find is that as you do that, you're going to see that it sticks to the soap. And even this is great. You're going to say, look, do you guys see? Here's what I see here. I see, I'm seeing kind of a three written out here. And this looks like, well, it look, kind of looks like an S. If I was hard pressed, I'd say that your, your card might have been the three of spades. It's, it's, it almost didn't come out, but that's what it looks like to me. What was your card? And they're going to go, eh, eh, you know, and it's going to be the three of spades. Okay? It's almost even better if little bits of it show up. It looks more realistic, like something came through from the spirit world and it didn't quite get there, but it got there enough that they can see, and you kind of point it out. That looks like a three. Act confused. That looks like an S. You're going to find this is going to be one of the most amazing tricks. Do not tell the secret to this, okay? Welcome to Illusionist. We're going to show you videos of sleight of hand magic. This is magic that you can learn how to do. Here's the first one. I got a great trick I want to show you guys. Okay, it's called the disintegrating quarter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place this quarter right on the table, and in front of you, I'm going to make that quarter disappear. Disintegrate, actually. You ready? Yes. Yep. I'm going to take this wine glass, I'm going to place it over it so I can't get my little sticky hands at it and try and palm it off the table. I'm going to make it go right through the table, disintegrate, and totally gone. Okay? Yeah. Got it? Okay. No, I'm watching. Okay. Now I take, I take this cocktail napkin, simple old cocktail napkin, and I really snugly cover this glass. Quarter's still there. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Quarter's still there. Yeah. hasn't moved, right? One, two... Abracadabra. <laughs> gone. It's not gone. It didn't go. Uh, no, it's not abracadabra. That's the problem. It's one, two, three. Okay. Abracadabra. That's it. <laughs> it's gone. It didn't go. It's still there. It's still there. Let's try it one more time. Okay. Well, you know, it didn't really work that well to even get it gone. So maybe what we ought to do this time is instead of doing that, let's see if we can get this right through the table and do a different trick. Instead, let's take the glass and put that through the table. How did you do that? <laughs> I want to know. How, I, I don't believe it. What don't I'm, you believe? All of it. I was watching the whole time and I see how you did it. It's I'm magic. <laughs> going to learn the, uh, what you're going to call the disappearing or the disintegrating quarter trick, but that's only misdirection to get people's attention focused onto the coin and away from the glass or the salt shaker or whatever you're going to use to put on top of it. Remember, you're at a dinner table. You pick up whatever's handy, but it has to have a good shape to it, okay? And a salt shaker is one of those things, but ideally, I think a glass is best. That's what I like to use. Okay, now... 
Let me tell you the keys to doing this trick, okay? The first key, when you put this over, is you're going to take a cocktail napkin that can be bent and folded and molded around the glass. Because what's going to happen is that that cocktail napkin is going to hold the shape of the glass long after the glass is gone, okay? Now let me first just teach you the move, the sleight of hand involved in this, okay? You keep pulling the glass back to right over your lap right here. At the edge of the table, you keep showing it like this. You're looking at the coin, it's not gone yet. You put it back, you're over here, you're back. And then at one point, that glass is gone. Now where it went, is into your lap right down here. Let me show you this. Bring the camera in nice and tight. The glass is folded up just like so. It's holding the complete shape. When you pull back to right over here at level with the table, watch. Boom. The glass is going to fall out into your lap. You let it go. You don't move your hand at all. You let it go. You bring it back over the table. Look at that. That is beautifully, the shape is beautifully held, okay? So that's the secret move. Now let's go through the routine so that you can follow it and learn it step by step. A, you're going to tell people that you're going to cause that quarter to disintegrate. You found a great new way to do it and you're going to learn how to do it. You put the glass, you tell them that so that I can't get at it, I'm going to make it even harder for myself and put the glass over top. But I don't really want you to see how this is done, so I'm going to take the napkin, fold it around the glass, and you're going to say, don't worry, the coin's still there. Now what you want to do is you want to several times through this, you want to pull it back to exactly this position. You don't want to take it to over here. You don't want to take it to over there. You don't want to pull it up like this when you're showing the coin. You want to take it to the same place every time so that people get used to seeing it go there. They're not thinking about it anymore. It's natural for this to come right back here to show the coin right here, okay? That's part of misdirection and learning how to do magic. So you've got it over there. You tell them, I don't want you to see how this is done. Now watch. First time we're going to try this. It works every time. One, two, three, boom. You take it back to your spot right over here. Don't let go of it. Uh-oh. Hang on, something must have gone wrong. Sometimes it takes me a couple of tries. Put it back down, let them hear it, listen. Not obviously, that was too obvious because I'm trying to let you know, but just a little bit, let them know that that glass is still underneath there. You're going to say, it always works the second time. Watch this. One, two, three. Comes back to here. Casually, without even looking, you're looking at this over here. I just let it go in my lap. Shape is still folded right here. It's beautiful. As far as they're concerned, it's still there. It's in your lap. Your other hand's still up here. You put it right back on top of the coin, and you say, you know what? It doesn't seem to be working very well, but let me try a different trick. You're going to reach under the table. I'll show you this in a minute. You're going to grab the glass, get it underneath the table, right underneath where it would be, and you're going to go like this. You're going to go... Hear that? That is a complete and utter illusion. People are sure that that is right there. And you are doing it underneath the table at the same moment that you are tapping this on top. So you're going underneath the table, you're going... And then all you're going to do is go, watch this. You're going to pause, and you're going to go... Uh, like it came right through the table. And slowly you're going to pull that out and you're going to say, you know what? I couldn't make the coin dis disintegrate, but look, the glass is even better. We've got the glass right here. Let's go right over here. I want to show this how this works. We've got it here. It falls into the lap right then. People are going to love it. Have fun with this one. It's a good one. The magic is a simple one. You do things that are impossible. All you have to do is make people see things they're really not seeing. 
That's what we teach here. Let's watch this next clip. Do you know what the four most wanted cards are in a game of poker? I'm just curious. This is separate aside from what four we're going to do. Four most wanted cards? Probably the, yeah. uh, the only aces? Yeah. Leave that away. That'll come into play way, way later on. Um, I'm going to shuffle the cards, mix them up, and then can, so, can one of you follow directions really well if I have you do something? Can Probably. You, you can follow directions very Okay, good. So the cards are shuffled. I want you to take the cards, and what I want you to do is cut them into four more or less equal piles. So okay? Pick up the whole deck. Oh, that's, that's it. Pretty good. And another one, and another one, and another Perfect. one. Perfect. Okay. okay, you cut wherever you wanted to, right? Yeah, I, did. I want you to do the whole thing from this point on, okay? Okay. Um, take a pile, let's say, take that one. Okay. Pick it up. I want you to transfer three cards from top to bottom. Like that? Yeah. This is going to be a weird way of mixing the cards up. We've got to mix them more. And? Put a card like on each other pile. Okay. One, two, three. And Put that one down. One down Let's say take uh, this one. Okay. Pick it up. Three cards Same from top to bottom. One, two, two, and three. three. One card on top of each other pile. Like that, huh? Cool. Super. And then take, here, huh? uh, let's one? say, this one. This one. Okay, this one. Doesn't really matter. One, two, three. You are an expert magician's assistant here, Barry. <laughs> Brilliant. So All right, pick up the, I think we got one more pile, right? I think you're right. Okay, three cards from top to bottom. Two. And three. Very good. And Do one, one on top of each other one. Three. Set right. those down. <laughs> so we got our four piles, am I correct? Yes, we do. Let me ask you a question. First off, I shuffled the cards. It's hard to follow where any cards go, even from there. Then you took the cards, you cut them into f not one, but four packets. Right. Did you cut wherever you wanted to? Yes, I did. And then we took the cards and we three here, three there, piles at random, top of each other pile. Weird way to do it, but it was done, right? Mm -hmm. But you did cut wherever you wanted to. Uh, yes, I, I did. did not influence you. No, you didn't. What were the four most wanted cards in the game of poker? Uh, four, aces. four aces. Yeah. No way. Check it out. One. <laughs> two. No way. Three. Wow. Oh. oh! How did you do that? <laughs> 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 Woo! You never even touched the cards. That's why you're the poker oh, player God. here. I never <laughs> touched the cards. Okay, you guys, we're going to learn how to do that 4 ace trick. It's an astounding trick because it all takes place in the other person's hands, which I love. If you can do magic from that place, it's fantastic. So first of all, it involves a slight setup of the deck, okay? We've got the four aces on the top of the deck. That's where they need to start, and that's where they need to stay. It's very, very simple. This is actually a simple trick, but don't let that fool you. You could see the impact, okay? You start with the four aces on the top of the deck, and then you tell people you're going to shuffle the cards. Now, this is a false shuffle that is, I'm going to show you, that looks completely like a real shuffle. Well, I but watched it, you when you did it before. And I, I know, and you it. couldn't I tell, was right? Really watching carefully. Exactly. So what you want to do, this false shuffle maintains the, okay. the status of the top card or cards, okay? Let me show you very simply and clearly how to do this. You do it in a standard overhand shuffle like this. The first time you come over like so, you're going to jog this card in up to an inch, okay? And then you're just going to shuffle off the other cards on top, everywhere, all over, okay? So jog means you bring towards it back me. a little bit. J exactly. You're going to mm -hmm. jog it in towards, towards yourself about an inch and then just shuffle off everything on top of that. Now look what that gives you. It gives you this whole area. This is the top of the pack underneath, this mm -hmm. top part right mm -hmm. here. So here's what you're going to do. You're just going to come underneath, pick up that whole po packet, and stick it on top. It's that simple. Let me show you what it looks like in normal action. Guys, I'm going to shuffle the cards first. We shuffle, mix them up really well, finish it with a cut, I'm ready to go. The aces are completely still on the top of the pack. Wow. And you're ready to go. Right. Very deceptive wow. false shuffle. Learn it well. It's very, very easy. But just practice it to make it look very, very uh, good. So now we've got the four aces on top of the deck. Here we go. 
What you do is you have the person cut into four piles, wherever they want, but you explain to them, cut into four more or less equal piles. They don't have to be exact, it doesn't matter. So they're gonna pick up the cards and they're gonna cut them across like this. Three and four. And if you're following your aces, we've got the aces over here, exactly. Well, you're gonna have them pick up the first pile. Three cards from top to bottom. They're gonna put one card on top of each other pile. See, now that puts another card on top of the aces. Yeah. Yeah. Then you have them pick up anything but that. That's gonna be last. So you say, oh, this one would be good. Transfer three cards from top to bottom. Put a card on top of each other pile. This now puts two cards on top of the aces. You've got this pile over here. Three cards from top to bottom the three other piles. Now you've got three cards on top. If you want them to do the same thing with the last packet, which is see now they've got these three extra cards on top, oh, but guess what? That's yeah. part of the instructions. Three, three, right? Transfer cool. three cards from top to bottom. You make right. them put the four aces on each packet. Oh, cool. Right. You are totally set. <laughs> Maybe I could do this. But here's the main part of the trick. You've got it done. No one knows that it's completely done yet, mm -hmm. but you. Mm -hmm. Now's the time to add the showmanship and the presentation to build it up. So here's what you say, okay? You say, by the way, after I shuffled the cards, you run through it. I put them down, and from that point on, the cards were completely in your hands. Am I correct? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so you really Did you cut the cards into four piles wherever you wanted to? Could I possibly make you have cut to a certain place in the deck? There's no way, right? Mm -mm. Then we took the cards and we shuffled them around in a weird way. We picked up piles at random. We put three here, three there, cards on top of each other pile. You just get them going and all. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we did everything to these cards. And then you step back. Did I touch the cards? No. <laughs> and then you just say, what were those four most wanted what cards in a game of poker? The aces. One, two, <laughs> three. <laughs> and four. Oh, that is cool. And people just blow their stack. If you want to get to the radical road to street magic, this is the way to do it right here at illusionist.com. Check out this next one. Look, we got a pack of cards here, okay? okay? Standard old pack of cards. We need to pick a card at random, so let's battle and let's do this with you. Okay. Okay, you ready? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the cards like this, and I want you to just call it stop. Anytime you feel like it, whenever, go. Stop. Okay. Look at the card. Wait, you don't even have to move. Okay. Look at the card you stopped me at. Everybody got it? Yep. Camera's yep. got it? I don't even want to look. Okay, I got it. Got it? Yep. Look, uh -huh. watch. Back into the pack. We're going to shuffle the cards. Hold your hand up, Matt. Right here. Okay. I have no clue where your card is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn them over one by one. When we get to your card, I want you to just send it to me through totally through mind transportation okay. let me know don't say anything keep a poker face but I, internally i want you to send it to me straight across okay vibe it to you exactly okay. vibe it to me when you see the card look well Good. Where was it? Oh, uh, what'd it you yet. do? You didn't see it, did, did you? Did we miss it, guys? Did we miss it? I don't know. I didn't see Brad, it. Brad, no. uh, what did you do with that? What'd you do with that? Oh, it wasn't in there. <laughs> it wasn't in there. You know what? Wait, Frankly, wait, I don't understand that. Didn't the card you thought of you just was not it. in there, correct? Correct. She didn't what'd you think do with of it? it. She saw it. We all saw it. I know you saw it in there, and it's gone now, right? I never exactly know. Uh, where? What'd you do with it? What? I don't know. I never know what exactly. Do you guys have pockets? No, what'd you do with it? Sometimes I never know. Um, I don't, I don't do believe Check this. your pocket, Larry. Maybe, uh... Oh, right. No way. Right. No way. Oh, man, no way. How'd you do that? How'd you do that? I did not know. Oh, man, that's great.
great. How did you do that? Okay, guys, we're going to learn how to do this uh, transportation of a card into either someone's pocket or it can go outside of the window, kind of stuck to the window, and someone opens the curtain and there's their card on the outside of the window. Whatever. Wherever you can plant the card ahead of time, that's where it can go. Now, here's how it's done. It's pretty ingenious. First of all, I use the Six of Clubs. You've got a duplicate of the card that you're going to make them pick. It's going to seem like... They picked a card completely at random, but you are literally going to make them pick that card, and I'll show you how to do that. First of all, you've got your duplicate of the Six of Clubs. During the course of the evening, whenever you are, you plant the card wherever you think it would be really incredible that it showed up. So that's planted. Let's pretend that's gone. The second item that you have is this. You have a duplicate of the Six of Clubs behind a different card, say a red card. Now, what you've done is this. With the Seven of Diamonds, you've taken an X-Acto knife or a razor blade or even just scissors will work, and you've cut out just a little quarter of an inch so that this card is less than all the other cards right here, okay? Then what you've done is you've taken some plain, transparent scotch tape, and you've taped the cards together so that when they flip together, it looks like this. The Six of Clubs is behind the red card, in this case, the seven of diamonds. The tape goes here. This on the seven of diamonds is cut right there, and that's your fake card. You'll always have that, and you'll always now use the six of clubs, which is behind here, in order to do the trick. This is planted somewhere. Good, okay? Now, here's the way that you make them pick the six of clubs. You start with this card with the cut end out, like so, okay? That goes into the pack about a third of the way down, okay? You've got that. You're going to pull out your pack of cards and you're going to say, guys, I've got a pack of cards here. This is a standard pack of cards. We'll shuffle. Just run a few cards in a standard overhand shuffle. It looks like they're shuffled. They are shuffled. No big deal. You haven't really changed the location of that seven of diamonds, that special card, from about a third down, okay? Then you turn the pack over like so. Just rotate it. You go through, you show them. This is just a standard pack of cards. No one can ever even see that with the Seven of Diamonds. No one's ever going to look. They go by too quick. Okay, now, guys, this is how you make them pick the Six of Clubs. Okay, you've got your special card in there. What happens is when you go through the cards like this, you're going to hear a snap when it gets to that card. Listen. Hear that? Yes. Very obvious. So what you're doing is this. When you go through the cards like so, you tell them, I want you to stop me anywhere, it doesn't matter. You go through it very smoothly, and they're going to say, you get to about the middle, and you t tell me stop anytime. You get ready, you time it, just so that as they say stop, you're finishing, boom, you get to that. Did you hear that? Yes. It just takes a little practice with the cards, go through it, make sure you can stop right at that. And then, you lift up the cards like so, and what it shows is the six of clubs. Because the seven, I'm going to pull this out and show you, is down here. The six, since it's a full-length card, pulls up like so, and you show them the six of clubs. Yep. And that's how you make them pick the six of clubs. Okay. And it looks completely random. Then you say, look, you want them to watch that card going into the pack. You say, look, look, and you make sure everybody's watching, and you go, boom, watch. I'm going to shuffle the cards. Pick up some cards from underneath, before that card, shuffle them on top, and say, now look, hold out your hand. Put those there. You get them away from you. You show them, okay? You don't say, look, my hands are empty. You just say, okay. That card is in there. We picked a card at random. You've got it. Here's what I'm going to do. You pick the cards up, turn them over like so. Say, I'm going to go through the cards on the table fast. When you see your card, beam it across to me. Get it through in my mind, and, and I'll know. But don't say anything. Then you're going to go through the cards one by one. And when you do get to that seven of diamonds, you're going so fast, no one can see a thing. Did you oh, see that? Oh, yeah, I get it. Now. You then cover it with all the other cards. Uh -huh, yeah. So you go through the whole pack, everything's uh -huh. on there, and you look up at them and you say, wow. you didn't see your card, did you? 
and they say no and you say you know I haven't perfected this it's gone but it is somewhere I don't know exactly where I never know where wow, and you so start easy. isn't that easy God, yeah really. and you look around right. and then finally after everyone's looking for it you say what about in your pocket did you check your pocket yeah, or wherever you planted or it, wherever you planted it. Yeah. look at oh, open the great. curtain look outside the window that's great. isn't that a cool that's trick a yeah that's a good and it's yeah. easy too, too. Yeah. Yeah. the only thing you have to practice is that one thing with the seven of diamond snap. just where you're doing the snap yeah. and just timing it so that as the and if by chance here's a very important point if they call out sna uh, stop after you've gotten to the thing go through it and say you got to be a little quicker than that and start over. Ready, call out. What and then if they did it if they did it right at the beginning? Right you, you time it. You time it so that it's so that you say ready, go, and you're almost at the oh. middle. You say ready, go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ready, go. You're almost at the middle. Then you go slow and then you're waiting and as soon as they say stop, boom, you go right to your card. Magic has changed. No more top hats or tails. Now you can wear anything and do a really cool trick. It's more amazing that way. It means that you can do it. Let's watch this next clip. Now, just in case you didn't know if you could do an illusion or not, I took Josh, who's a neighbor from down the way a little bit, and I said, do you want to learn something? This is Josh right over here. Hello. And... Um, I taught Josh this in 10 minutes, and he was like a pro doing it, okay? So he's got his dad in here. This is Larry right over here. Hello. Larry is going to watch it for the first time ever, never seen it before, has no idea what he's going to do. Take it away, Josh. Do you have a business card on you there? Of course. Okay. What I'm going to do is fold this card up into force here. You're not going to be seeing this card again, sorry to say. And uh, this is going to make for one amazing trick. Do you like magic? I do. Good. But I don't think you're going to be able to do any magic with me. Well, we'll see. We'll see <laughs> what's going on. all your routines. You know, all the routines. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is your business card. It's mm -hmm. torn up with one hole right in the middle. No Certainly. funny stuff. Nope. On. One into this string. If I can mm -hmm. get you to hold either side real taut for me. How, how much space? Um, that's right, good right there. Like that? Now, this card is only going to come off this rope in two spots, and that's over here right. and over here. Right. For right now, I'm going to leave it right there in the middle. Okay. Now, I could do this trick for you in plain view, mm -hmm. but I've found from the reaction of my audience that it's best for your own good that I cover it with this handkerchief. Thank this you. trick is so amazing, it can't be seen by the human eye. Okay. Now, I learned this trick many, many years ago. As a young boy, I was scouring the internet. Is that what you're doing on the internet every That's night? That's every night. Oh okay, but here we go, here we go. Now this, this is, okay, yeah. I, I didn't think I'd be able to do it. You didn't think I'd be able to fool you, but I think I've got this going, right? A little slack, a little slack over, okay, yeah. There's your business card. How'd you do that? <laughs> it's easy, it's cheap, theillusionist.com. That's my card. <laughs> Okay, you guys, we're going to learn how to do the business card off the string trick, but, which is actually a, a, a very old trick, but so cool because it's so simple, but no one knows how it's done when you're finished. Let me tell you the way to do this. You're going to use a duplicate business card, okay? And I'll show you exactly what to do with that in a second. Josh and I will both show you. Uh, he learned last night how to do this in 10 minutes, and he was fantastic, as you've seen. So... What you do is if someone gives you the business card, let's say you're out to a business dinner. Someone gives you the business card, uh, you know, oh, here's my card, keep it, okay? Prepare it the way that I'm going to tell you. And then later on when you're ready to do your trick and there's a lull in the conversation, you want to see some magic, I learned on an internet site, this is really cool. Hey, does someone have a business card? You know, do you have a business card? Point to the person who gave you the card already, get a card from them, okay, and then... Here's what you're going to do. First of all, here's what you're going to do to prepare their card ahead of time. You're going to fold it once in half. You're going to fold it in half the other way. And you're going to tear this little corner out of it just so that it's kind of circular. 
So when, oops, hang on, let me finish tearing that. So when you open this up, what you're going to have is a circular hole in the business card like so. Just a small one. The smaller, the better. And sometimes it's a little hard to tear the, the paper, but what you do is you tear one end, get it going, and then tear the rest up. And you tear it on an angle, see, just like that, so that you've got a hole that looks like so. Because you want both holes to look similar. Now, you've got this. Forget that for now. The person gives you their card. You're going to say, okay, next I need someone's shoelace. Someone's going to take off their shoelace. Or if you want to, you can just have it in your pocket and say, okay, look, I've got a shoelace. Lay that on the table and say, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold this card in half this way and this way. And I'm going to tear. And boom, you tear it out so that it looks like this one. Okay, let me see if I can do that. There we go. You tear out a little hole, and you've got a duplicate card, which looks very, very similar to the other one. Try to get it a little smaller. I tore out a bit big one there, okay? Now, this one, in the meantime, this one that you've prepared ahead of time, this extra duplicate card, you've got in what we call finger palm position, which is right here. The palm is here. The fingers are here. This is here. You can bend it a little bit, keep it tight like that, keep your hands looking the same, natural, relaxed. Forget you even have it. Don't even worry about it, okay? So here, you've taken this, even with this in finger palm position, you can take this, fold it up, tear out the corner, put it in your pocket, throw it on the floor, whatever. Open that card up and tell two people, let's say you're at a dinner table, for, but right now we've got just Josh. Come in a little closer right here. And you're going to tell him what he did with his father when you saw that was hold the, the, the rope just like so. You're going to say, I'm going to thread this onto the rope. Meanwhile, you've got your duplicate here. You're going to say to them, this is where you start acting. This is such a simple trick that you just feel free to be yourself and act it up and make a big deal out of everything, okay? You saw Josh, he did it perfectly. You're going to say to them, look, the only way that this business card is going to come off the string is by going this way and off or this way and off. But for now, we'll leave it in the middle. You're going to say something like what Josh did. You're going to say, can I borrow a handkerchief? Or you're going to pull one out that you have. You're going to say, you know, this is so amazing that to the naked eye, if you saw this, you'd probably just blow up. Okay? So I'm going to cover this over with a handkerchief, and I'm going to do this before your very eyes. And while you're doing it, I'm going to take the handkerchief off, but you're going to do everything underneath the handkerchief, okay? Here's what you're going to do. You've got your extra duplicate in your finger palm position right here. The handkerchief is now over top of the business card. All you do is this. You're going to talk to them, ask them if they like magic tricks. Ask them if they, what was the last magic trick you saw? While you're working, get them talking a little bit. You are going to do this. Tear the business card slowly so no one can hear it, take it off, fold it up, put it in your other hand, open up the other one so that it's ready, okay? Now, you've got the handkerchief, that's over, you're all set, right? This is sitting right here. You're going to reach underneath with this hand that has the, the folded up duplicate now, you're going to take that right underneath and you're going to slowly say... Pretend this is underneath and you've just got it off and you're going to go, wait a minute, wait a minute, I think I've got it. Wait a minute, give me a little slack. Yes, I've got it. And you're going to pull that off. The duplicate is right here underneath the scarf. You're going to pull that off and you're going to go, look, it came right off. Everyone at the table is immediately going to jump for that business card. They're not going to believe it, as you saw. You're going to give it to them. Quietly put this one in your pocket. Get rid of the evidence. They can examine the string. They can examine the business card to their heart's content because it has no tears in it whatsoever. And it's done.
The magic you'll see here is street magic, straightforward, in-your-face magic, the kind you can do anywhere and any place. Here's the next clip. Reach into the pack, take a card, any card. Uh, don't let me influence your choice in any way. No, you don't have to take that one. Any card you want, seriously. Not the whole deck. Not the whole deck. Take that. Do not show me the card, no matter what you do. Good. Throw it back in the pack. Say, right about there is good. Did you memorize the card? Yes. Both sides? Oh, <laughs> you got me on that one. Okay, good. So we've shuffled the cards. Now, we're going to see if you can cut to your card, okay? But what I want you to do is to cut the cards into three piles. One, two, and three. I'm going to take a look at each card and see if you cut to your card, but I want you to do one thing. Okay. Keep a complete, straight poker face. Okay. Do not, no matter whatever you do, do not let it show in your face that that's your card, even if it is. Okay. And if you blink, you know, I'll know. You got to just keep the straight face, okay? Okay. Or if okay. I continually blink, you might not know. Exactly. Okay. You can do that. All right. It might look a little weird. <laughs> <laughs> but I can do that. Exactly. Okay. okay. Let's take a look at the first card. Seven mm -hmm. of clubs? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I don't think the seven of clubs was your card. Let's get rid of that one. We'll take the next one, the uh, queen of diamonds. Mm -hmm. so, was that your card? No. You're not supposed to tell me. Oh. How quickly <laughs> they crumble. Okay, that's fine. Stay there. That's good. So now I know the queen of diamonds is not your card. We've got one card left. Let's see. We've got the four of spades. You're doing that blinking over and over again. You're trying to fool me, huh? Okay, actually, I didn't think it was black. So look, we've got one, two, three cards, all of which are not yours. You blew that. Okay, I'm going to give you one more chance to okay. find your card. Give me a number between, let's say, one and ten. Anywhere between one and ten. Go. Should I tell you? Yeah, oh, tell me. Okay, eight. Eight? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna, we'll count down exactly eight cards from the bottom, and we'll see if that's your card, okay? Okay. Here we go. We're going to start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to the eighth card, and now you can finally tell me what was the name of your card. What was it? Four of spades. Was the four of spades? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't know. I What's thought there? I almost blew your trick for you. What's there? Ouch! The four of hearts. Oh my god. The first thing you do is have them pick a card, any card. So you, you, fan, you fan it out, you spread them out, and they pick a card. Any one, it doesn't matter. They've got the card. Tell them not to show it to you, show it around to everyone, because then everyone can be in on the thing when right. you blow the trick, because you've got to look like you blow it. You don't really, but it's going to look like that. So now we've got the nine of clubs. So here's what you do in order to control that card. You have to control that card and get it to the bottom of the pack. I'm going to take you through step by step. This is a very handy false shuffle to control a card and get a card exactly where you want to get it. You shuffle a few cards off, learn how to do the overhand shuffle, and you have them put it back on top. Okay. Put it back on top. And here's what you do. You take a, one card and peel it off and jog it over to the, over towards you by about an inch. That's to mark that spot. You know then that their card is directly underneath that right. card. You've got it sealed. Now, you just casually shuffle all those cards off on top of that. But you've still got that exact spot, boom, right there, marked. And you've never touched the deck underneath that you card. You have not touched the deck underneath okay. the card, exactly. Then what you do, I'm going to show you from a back angle right here. You just grab the cards that are underneath and throw them on top like it was an extra cut to further seal the fate of that card. Okay? Now do you know where the card is? On We've, the bottom. No. Because you took that bottom part, it was on the top of that, and you put it on top. So then it's on top. It's on top. Right. Now, to get it to the bottom is very easy. You peel it off. In an, I'm exaggerating that. You don't do it that strongly. 
you peel it off like so in an overhand shuffle and shuffle f everything else on top of it and set the pack down. And you say, let's see if you can become a magician. I want you to see if you can cut to your card. Cut anywhere you want, but I want you to cut it into three piles. So go ahead and cut it into three piles. It goes one, two, no matter. and three. three. Doesn't matter where it is. That's right. Now you know that you've got the three piles. You know their card is still underneath there. Right. Doesn't matter where they've cut to, you've got their card on the right. bottom. You pick up the farthest away from your, your card. You want to leave that till last. Okay. And you're going to look, okay, was this your card? Now don't tell me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to tell just by looking in your face. And you look at the card and you say, that's not your card. And you take it like so. Look, the four fingers on the bottom, the thumb is on the top. You put your finger on here and you take the three off and you put it to the front and forward. Get rid of it. We'll get rid of that card, you say. Then you put this pack on top of the other one, pick it both up. You look at this. You know that's not her card, but you say, okay, the king of hearts. Was that your card? Right. And almost always they say, no. And you say, you're supposed to be keeping a poker face. You're not supposed to tell me. Yeah, you got me exactly on that one. Got you exactly on that one. And you say, okay, I don't think that's your card. Well, you told me it wasn't anyway. The same way, four fingers on the bottom, thumb on the top, take that card, peel it off, and put it out. We'll get rid of that one. We know it's not that one. Take the pack pick up the other one, you've got all of it. Now you've come to her card. She or he is going to see that that's their card and they're immediately going to try to keep a poker face. And they're really going to try. <laughs> and, that's, and that's fine. You want them to do that. And now you're going to say, you know what? I don't think that was your card either. I'm pretty sure your card was red. Or the opposite of whatever it whatever their card right. is, okay? Then you're going to do the same thing, four fingers on the bottom, thumb on the top, finger right here, and you're going to look like you peel that card off, but you don't, okay? This is a move known in magic as the glide, okay? And this is how it works. It's very simple and very easy to do. You've got the cards. What you're going to do is as you go down like this, you are going to do that and glide that top card back okay. half an inch, an inch, whatever you feel right. comfortable with. And you are going to be pulling out the second card, right. not that card. Because the cards are down. Because the cards are down, no one can see right. which card you're pulling out and you've got the eight of hearts, right. which then goes down onto the table. Meanwhile, you've still got this sticking out like this. Very easy. No one can see it. You just bring the little finger back and stick it back. Again, we've got the card. Again, the we've bottom. got the card That's on the, the bottom. Deck. Exactly. Right. But, now here's the secret to this move, okay? Let me show you this. The secret is, every single time you did put down a card, if you really did put it down, you took this and it's like that finger is already there pulling the card off. It's such a good illusion. It looks like you took that off. But when I take that nine of clubs, boom, it's not the nine of clubs. I did it all in one right. smooth motion. The glide, pushing it back. The glide, the pushing it right. back. I've got it back like this. Right. I'm going to go, ching, and it's back in shape. You've pretended to pull the, the nine out, you've glided it back, and you've put this card, which is not their card, down on the table. So they've got three cards which are not their card. Now, you leave this like that, don't put it back yet, to even further give the illusion and really drive it home. You're going to pull out the next second card, okay? So it couldn't possibly still be there. And you're going to tip it up, and you're going, you're going to say, so we've got one, two, three cards. You're going to use it only as a pointer. Right. One, two, three cards, all of which are not yours. And you're going to put it back. That's when you're going to do this little move of putting this back. See that? Right. In with the little finger. And put that back so no one can see that other card underneath there. Right. Okay? This is a beautiful thing. It's all well orchestrated. The whole trick to go together. Then you're going to say... Pick a number between 1 and 10. Let's say they pick 4, okay? 
you're going to actually are going to take that in the same way that you always do it. You always do it the same motion. You're going to take, okay, we're going to count down four cards. One, you do pick that card up. While you're putting it down, do the glide again. Okay. Once again, the glide with this little third finger pulling it back. So now you're getting ready to take the second card. It's not the six. You're going to pull out cards until you get to that, their number. So you can go any number. Right. Two, that's an, the second card. Three, that's the second card. Then when you're ready, clip back in. The little finger right. pushes it back in. You've got that card. Don't show them yet. Keep it face down. Put this one down and say, I gave you a second chance. Hopefully this is going to be your card. They're laughing. They think this fool, uh, this poor guy or poor girl or whatever, it's down there on the table still. You're going, well, what was your card? And you're acting a little unsure. And, and they say, what, nine of clubs. And you take a look at it tentatively, and they're starting to laugh. And then you go, oh, that's what I thought you said. Cool. At that point, everybody's going to dive for that card. They dive for it. And they go, but, but and it's done. Street magic is an extreme kind of magic, up close and personal. The more impossible it is, the better, like this. Rosemary, I'm going to show you the voodoo card trick, okay? You take any two cards out of a deck. I'm going to take this card, and we're going to fold it. I'm going to try to get this as close to even as I can. Good, that's good, okay. Leave that there. I'm going to fold this one in, out, inside out, like so. Okay. Now let's take this one, let's take it like this. I'm going to put this one inside. Actually, let's do it the other way so you can see it the long way. Look, I'm going to fold this. If I can open it up at this point, I folded it too good. Inside out. And you can actually see the card right here. I'm going to clip it so it's perfectly. That way you can see it long ways, that's better. Now watch. You see the red card folded in over top of that? Yes. That's like the Bermuda Triangle in there. Something really, really wacky is going to happen inside there. Do you want to see this? Oh, absolutely. This is voodoo. You know, it's still practiced. You ready? Bring it on. Bring it on. Check this out. Watch. Look as slowly as I can. As I push the card through, it literally is turning inside out on itself. Now look, I could take that card and push it right through, and it turns back. But what I'm going to do is stop this card literally halfway. Look, I'm going to leave that there, and this card is stopped. And turn right there. Look, there's the ten of diamonds, and there, with the same tear, is the exact card turned inside out on itself. Now, it starts with a little bit of card preparation, okay? You take two cards, a black and a red card, like so. Take the black card, and what you're going to do is you're going to rip the card right down the middle until you get to this exact little dot. Okay. Or if you have a different kind of card, it's just right to the middle, okay? So you're going to rip this as close, very simply, right here, right down to the middle, like so. doesn't matter if it's a little crooked or whatever. Right. Okay? That's the start of the trick. Then, 
You're going to cover that with your finger. You can't see that, can you? No, I can't. Okay, and you hold the other card in the exact same way. Okay. Okay. So just start with the two cards like this facing you, and then show them, click them. You would never even You would suspect. never know this. Exactly. So, you put the red card on the table, and you say, I'm going to fold both these cards in half. Now, you've got the rip covered right here. All you do is bend it in towards yourself, and you say, I'm going to try to get it as exact as possible. You try to get it as exact as possible, get a good crease going down there. Look, you have to come down here, square those two ends up, because they come off a little bit because of right, the rip, right. but you square them up with your fingers, and they can take as long as you want. People are watching you. You get a good crease going. You turn it back towards yourself and just set it down on the table. Now, that alone looks so innocent because you're leaving the card alone. You, all you've done is fold it in half and you've put it down. Then you're going to pick up the red card and fold it, so leaving the inside out, like so. Okay. You fold that down like this, get a good, nice crease, right. turn it over, and pick up this card. You want to have your, the rip close to your fingers, so I always pick it up like this and then I turn my hand over. Keeping it covered, you can hold the card gently, no one can see that rip, okay? Right. Now here's the secret. You're gonna take the nine of hearts, you're gonna put it into the crease, just like you would normally, but what you're gonna do is when you come down to the rip, let it fall through. So it's just like okay. that. See, now what you've got here, you're showing people like this and you can move it in and out, but what you've really got is that. Okay, moving in and out. Okay. Got I that got so it. far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you show them like so, you move it to here, and you say, oh, wait a minute, maybe I'll do it the long ways. You'll be able to see it better that way. So you've got it like so with the thumb on top. You come up here, there over there, you peel this, you hold everything securely in your hands, open this up like this, and keep that card down at the bottom. So it's covering, because if you did come up, they'd see this. Right. You don't want them to see that. It's like so, and you, all you do is press back here with your middle finger and turn the cards back in on themselves. And it looks completely like all you're doing is folding that card. And when you've got it, you just clip it like that. See, it's still open. You don't worry about that. That's good. You want to show them. Right. It's, that's just completely okay, but I'm going to finish that crease right here and you've got this whole little secret thing going on in there. Right. Which no one Nobody knows about. Would ever even no know. one would ever guess. Yeah. It's so perfect. It's such a beautiful illusion. And then you're going to say, now watch, I'm going to do this as slowly as possible. And you can get up close. No one can see a thing, even if they're looking inside. There's nothing they can see. And you're going to take it and slowly tap that card and then let it come through. And it's a freaky illusion because it oh, just looks... it still is even amazing it? to me, even though you showed me how to do it. I know. It still plays with your mind. I know. It's great illusion. Isn't that so cool? And you take it to here. Now, you can pull it out as far as just before the middle. So if you see that circle starting, you can pull it a little bit of that, and that's it. You don't want to go too far or people are going to see that rip. Right. That's what you don't want. So you're going to stop it there. It looks so cool to just move this card. Oh, it looks perfect. Isn't that unbelievable? Look at that illusion. You can see the rip in here, and you can see exactly where it's going and where it's not. You do it very slowly. I but can come up I that far. You can't see a thing right to here, and then you push it through. And this can go up to closer to the middle of the card, but not too far. You do it once through, once back the other way. And then you say, I'm going to do something even more amazing. I'm going to take that card inside its Bermuda Triangle, inside the voodoo card right there, and I'm going to stop it halfway. And you reach over, you pull it out a little bit more, but under cover of the fingers, and then slowly, you can see back here what you're doing. You just tear that in half. Set this down. Slowly pull out this half and say, look, it got stopped halfway. And put that down right next to the other because it's just such a freaky illusion. Open that up, set that down, and show them. 
that it is the exact same card and say mm -hmm. turned inside out wow. on itself. Right there. Never before has the art of street magic been this accessible. Nothing will let you learn as quickly or as easily as our revolutionary videos. It's sleight of hand and you can do it. Take that quarter, put some kind of um, mark on the coin that you'll uh, allow you to recognize the coin when you see it, or a mark or an X or whatever you want. Okay, good. And will you hand me a sugar packet there, Judy? Any one, it doesn't matter. Okay, watch carefully. I'm going to take the sugar packet here. I'm going to take the quarter. Judy, do you see that mark right there? Yep. Okay, good. We're going to put it on top of the sugar packet. I'm going to close my hand, and we're going to create some pressure here. Can you squeeze the wrist right there? And will you squeeze the hand? We're going to see if we can make something happen. Check this out. Ow. Okay, good. No, that's good. That's good. <laughs> it's happening. I can feel it right now. Wait. Do you feel anything? Yes. Look, 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 look. 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 I think something happened. Will you? Sheila, will you hold out your hand? Look. Oh! <laughs> wow. Is that your That's coin? That's amazing. Is that your coin? That's my coin. There's my little flower. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Okay, you guys, we're going to learn the sugar packet and the quarter trick. Now, it takes place with any sugar packet from anywhere. So you can be standing at a bar, you can be sitting at a restaurant table, or you can be sitting there having coffee with your friends. It doesn't matter. Any quarter, okay? The only thing you have to have is a permanent marker so that the mark stays on and they can see. You have to do this because otherwise they're going to say that you put the quarter in the sugar packet and glued it back mm -hmm. together. It's got to have their mark or their initials on it like so. So the first thing you do is you give it to them and you say, put a mark on it. So we've already got that one still left over. Then you take the sugar packet, you hand, get them to hand you a sugar packet, any one, because it doesn't make any difference which one they give you. You can even do it with a packet of equal. But I like sugar because it's heavier, you know? It's heavier and it sounds more like there's a quarter in, in there, mm -hmm. you know, whereas equal doesn't. You put it on your left hand. You put the quarter closest to you, leaning a little bit off the sugar packet. Okay? Now, here's the secret move, and this is a brilliant move in magic. It's very convincing because it, you're not transferring anything from hand to hand here. You actually show the sugar packet and the quarter in the same hand, and then you close your hand and you turn it over. Now, when you turn it over, and you're talking, here's what you're doing. The quarter was a little bit to this side. When your hand is closed, I'm gonna keep my hand up so you can see. You let gravity take it, mm -hmm. and just clip it right there so it's ready to go. It's like an airplane ready to launch, okay? So then your hand is gonna turn over and it looks like you're holding the coin, but you've got it clipped right here, ready to go. If you just release your fingers, it's gonna fall. Here's the procedure, okay? Can you take that hand, you're out ahead of your fist, and squeeze my wrist. You just dropped, you just mm -hmm. let it fall right into your hand and squeeze my wrist, shake your hand a little bit. So there's a purpose for bringing this hand straight underneath because you wanna show them what to do. Mm -hmm. You always have a reason for doing everything. That's what makes magic good. You never just Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, you've got to have a reason. Mm -hmm. So you want to get your hand out ahead of you, and that puts all their attention on this person's hand. Squeeze my wrist. You're talking to them. You're not even thinking about it. See how fast I can do it? If it's clipped there, turned over, I can just say to you, can I take that hand? I want you to squeeze my wrist. There was no pause. It's done. I've got the hand. 
the quarter over here, it's in my hand, and you just hold it in your cupped fingers right here, just on your fingertips. You don't close your hand completely. You just leave it like that. That's called finger palm position. Mm. Just clip it right there and just let your hand forget about that hand because it's, it's got nothing in it as far as you're concerned. You've got to be a magician and believe that. And then you take this hand and you get it away from this other hand. Put it right out here. You're going to make the fusion and they're going to squeeze your hand. And then you open it up, slowly put it down, turn your hand over. The coin's gone. Shake it. Turn it over. Take it. Say, hold out your hand. Now look, all you've done here is you've got the quarter in your fingers. You just straighten your hand a little, keep it up so no one can see. Put the sugar packet on top of the quarter. Now you could even show it like that. Because you have to put it into this hand in order to tear it open. That's a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. So you tell them, you put that on top of the quarter, and you say, can you hold out your hand, please? Go ahead. Hold out your hand. You tear it open, and then here's the other move. Very simple. You reach underneath with the thumb, lever up, the quarter and clip it right behind the sugar and then as it pours out let it drop mm. and it looks exactly like it came right out of the sugar packet it does he doesn't it yeah <laughs> That's great. i thought it did I, you thought it did. <laughs> I, I did and so will everyone else it's really very simple but you need to practice that i can't tell you mm -hmm. how many times i went over it again and again this move can i have that hand please boom it's done squeeze that wrist and you give it to them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the key point. That's great. Yeah. They'll be like, where's the signature? And then they'll be like, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wanted to have the ability to throw a quarter into your hand and just make it disappear? Or make playing cards do strange things? Maybe pull some money out of a little kid's ear? Get the Street Magic Package and you'll be doing it in no time at all. Every single day when I was six years old, I used to go to this one candy store where the owner of the candy store named George would do this magic trick for me. And every single day, I'd tell my friend, let's go, let's go. I've got to see this thing one more time. And I'd go, and I'd buy something at his store, and I'd say, OK, do that trick for me one more time. And every single time, George would say, OK. And he'd hold his hand out like this. OK, now watch this. He'd hold his hand out. He'd just wiggle his fingers. He'd do a little of this. And then he'd just reach out and go like that and he pull a quarter or a 50 cent piece out of nowhere. And I go, but I saw you wiggling your fingers. I know it wasn't behind your fingers. It was not in your hand. I could see everything. How did you do that? And he'd go, well, that's magic. Come back tomorrow and I'll do it for you again. That's one thing you can learn. And the other thing is, watch this. I'm gonna take this coin We'll roll up my sleeve. Come in tight on this. Look at this. I'm going to take this coin, and I'm going to just rub it like so. You can do this at any restaurant. Look. Gone. And that would be a perfect way to go from George's trick into making it go back into thin air. So we can learn how to do that, if you're ready. Let's, let's start with a 50 cent piece, but you can also use a quarter to learn how to do George's incredible quarter trick. I think he actually did it maybe with a nickel, but I was trying to do it with something bigger so that you could see. It doesn't matter what size, depends on the size of your hand, so you pick and you can do it that way. For purposes of explanation, we will uh, use a, a 50 cent piece. Here is where the coin is hidden in your hand, okay? It actually goes right here between your thumb and your hand. And it's hidden at the beautiful, perfect angle 
right there. Let me show you the angle. You're going to hold your hand. See that? You're going to hold your hand out like this. And because it's flat to the audience's eyes, they cannot see the quarter. Okay? So you always have your audience out this way. And you can stand there with your hand out for an hour. And they are not going to see that coin. And when you get good, you have to practice a little bit. You keep your hand loose. You can wiggle your fingers. George would always wiggle his fingers like this. You can even do something like choop, choop, choop to really show your hand. Okay, that's the first part of this is just showing, getting it right. You angle the hand back down a little bit like that because you don't want to get too much like this or they're going to, can you see that? Yeah. You want to keep it back a little bit natural. Let your hand be loose. You don't want to come on and do this, holding your hand like a, a robot and then people get it that there's something in there. You want to keep everything loose, let your arm be loose, but just always be conscious of that angle from the audience, okay? The second part of this is how to produce the coin, which looks like this. You're going to reach out and go like that. Let me show you exactly how to do that, because it's really cool. You've got your coin in here. I'm going to turn this way so you can get a better angle. All you're going to do is you reach out, and as you're pulling back, so it looks like you pulled the coin out of thin air, you're going to go like this. You're going to go boom, boom, and tilt it up into view. So it slides out like that, and then it gets tilted up. And practice this, because what you want is you want it to look like you pulled it out of thin air. Now, if you were really going to pull a coin out of thin air, you would reach up and on the back stroke, the coin would come out, right? Because you get it here and you pull it out of thin air. So look at the way that works. You go, boom. And as you're coming back, that's when you tilt the coin up. And people are going to, I can't believe it. How did you do that? Because they can see that there's nothing between your fingers. And no one, of course, ever thinks between the thumb. They're looking for between the fingers always because they think you've done something like this. But when you're wiggling your fingers, they can see that's not the case. Let's learn the second part of this. This is a cool one that you can do at a restaurant that has a tablecloth or, you know, Thanksgiving dinner, whatever. doesn't matter as long as you're at a table. Now, this involves something called lapping, okay? It's a magician's art. Here, this is actually very, very easy to do this. What you're going to do is you're going to move the coin slowly back. Look, I'm, sh I'm letting it stick out. I'm going to show it to you. As you're rubbing, see the way my hand is still on a, the same plane? But that coin very quickly can move back right underneath your wrist. Your wrist is exactly over the edge of the table. No one can see it drop into your lap. And that's what you do. Watch. You will not see this. See how I'm doing this? Boom. It's gone. It looked like completely the coin stayed there under the fingertips. And in fact, let me tell you a, a way to increase this illusion. Look, you're going to take the coin, watch it slide back. See how fast? Look, watch it. Here it goes. And boom, it's in my lap. Then you're going to move away from all that forward. Leave a finger. Slowly, it's going, it's going. It's gone. Look amazed. Oh my God, it's gone. to remember that with magic you do see what you don't see and you don't see what you do see but you always see what you think you see and I'm sure you see what I mean enjoy our next clip now look if I take the cards watch black red black black red red black etc. I could go through the whole deck and pretty soon I'd have all a big pile of red and a big pile of black. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. But if I did it from the other side, not looking, that would be a cool trick if I could do it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. First off, let's get rid of these. Let's leave one out. 
I think it'd be even better if I had you do it, Judy. Okay. You want to try it? Sure. I'll try and guide you. Okay. From the mind. Take the cards and one at a time, put them on either the red or the black pile, but don't think about it, okay? Mm -hmm. You can do this. Okay. Just believe. Ready? Mm hmm Okay, put the first card down. All right. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Okay, she's good. She's hot. Don't think. Okay. Don't let that influence you. Okay. Keep going. One or the other. Okay, stop. Hang on. You're getting a little... Out of it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't say that. Hang on. I want to change things up. We've got... Uh, let me see. Keep hanging on to them. We've got the red pile over here. Let's make this the black pile. And let's make this... We've got black over there. We'll make that the red pile now, okay? Can you shuffle a little bit? A little. Good. Red's over there. Go. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, why don't you take a pile? I'll take a pile. And we'll check this out. You've got your pile? Mm -hmm. Spread them out so that you can see. You've got the red on the top, am I correct? Show, mm -hmm. show the camera too so they can see at home. Okay, we've got, I've got the black on top, you've got the red on top. Start turning over cards one by one. <laughs> this is no way, right? Hang on a minute. What have I got? The black on top? Let me see. One. Black. 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 Keep going, let me see this. Red, 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 to your marker card, there it is. It red. should be what now? Black. Turn them over here. Black, <laughs> black, 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 and black. Let's see if you separated them over here. <laughs> Look. Wow. You've got your red marker. Amazing. Any pack of cards, anytime, anywhere. Cool trick, huh? I'd like to learn it. Here's the setup. Get all the black cards in one pile. Get all the red cards in the other pile. Okay? Then... Get some and mix them up. Get like seven cards, let's say. Put a black, a red, a black, a red, a couple of blacks, another red, okay? Then you want to go all these on top of the red, on top of the black. Now here we're going to do a false shuffle, which is only going to reverse the order of the cards. It's going to bring all those little mixed ones to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Let me show you exactly how to do this. You run the first seven cards into your hand in an overhead shuffle. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you've got all red cards. Mm -hmm. So you can take a few, a bunch, until you get close to the middle of the pack, okay? Then you start going singly again. Until you feel that you're into the black, then you can let them go and mm -hmm. mix them up. Wow. It didn't do anything. It mixed up all the blacks within the blacks mm -hmm. and the reds within the reds, but it maintained the order of the red and the black. And what it left you with is when you then say, okay, guys, look, you're going to go black, red, black, red, and start putting them in different piles. So you, you turn the cards over and you go, look, black, red, black, red, black, black, red, and you stop there. Mm -hmm. You've got your first seven cards mm -hmm. out. This is, and you say, if I went on, I'd have a black pile here and I'd have a red pile here very soon. Mm -hmm. But if I turned the cards over and did it without looking, would you be amazed? Yes. Now, at this point, you're going to take these cards and leave one and put them back in the pack. And you're going to take that and leave one and put the red ones back in the pack. You already know that the red ones are on the bottom. The black ones are all on the top. So you say, we'll put these back anywhere. You open it at the black. Looks like you're sticking them in anywhere. You don't mm -hmm. care. You open this at the red lower down. Stick that into the lower. You've got, look, all your reds 
and all your blacks on top. Very, very simple. Now, you give the cards to another person and you say, I'm going to just do this myself for the sake of explanation. You say, don't think about it. We're going to try an experiment. Just put the cards one by one into either the black or the red pile. And what you're going to do is, as they're doing that, you do it face down, you are going to count 24 cards. That's what I did with you. Mm. Okay, so you're waiting. So they go here. It doesn't matter. This is black. This is still black over here. They're doing all kinds. There's going to be all kinds of blacks in the mm -hmm. red pile. We're going to deal with that in a minute. Mm -hmm. They stick down. We've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Now, don't worry about any of this. It's going to work out. You then say, wait a minute, stop. You're getting a little too sure of yourself here. I'm going to change things. I'm going to throw you off balance. What you've got left, if you went down twenty-four cards, is you've got one black card left, mm -hmm. left over. You've gone through twenty-three. You've got the last black card. You put that on now the red pile and say, I'm going to change that now to black. Then you reach in. Everything here is red. Mm -hmm. But you want to make it look like there's black and red in there. So you reach in and you say, hmm, there we go. Let's change this to red. You see the deception there? Okay, it's just little things like that that help to give the illusion of a completely mixed deck. Now, all they've got left here is a ton of red cards. All the red cards are right there. So they can shuffle this and they really feel that they're mixing up those black and red cards. Then you just have them deal out all these other cards on top of whatever they feel. Black and red, black and red, and you wind up something like this. Mm -hmm. Now one of these piles is good and one is off. Here's going to be the secret move, okay? You give them the pile that's on. So you can, if you don't, if you can't remember because it's all black and red, you just take a look and you say, so now that's the wrong pile, see, because I've got a red card, I'm mm -hmm. just looking, but you don't let them see. So I want to keep this pile for myself. So you say, let's give you one of the piles. You take this one, I'll take this one. Okay? Pick that up, then you spread the cards out, and you say, look, there are the cards. I've got the black on top, spread those out. There's your marker card. You've got the red on top. Now, here's what you're going to do. This is the little deception. Right here, you're going to put it back, but see that six of spades right there? You're just going to hold, stick your little finger in there. Close them up, all on top like that. Stick the little finger in. Do you see that right there? So the little finger is going below the six. Keep what's called a break right there. Okay? Now, they're going to be completely engrossed over mm -hmm. here because you, th all those should be red cards, right? Mm -hmm. Start turning them over. So they start turning them over. They're looking to see if they're red or black. When is it going to fail? Over here, all you do, you cut the cards. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to do. Now they're lined up. Okay? So they keep going a little bit and you say, wait a minute, stop. What have I got on top? The black, right? Don't spread them out. I've got the black on top, right? And you go, say the word, black, 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 black. Keep going, let's see. And they've got red, 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 until they get down to the marker card, have them put the marker card on top, and then say, now these should all be black. Start putting them right there. My God, look, black, 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 <laughs> black. Turn them all over. They're all black, Oops. except for the last one, the marker card. Then, and you say, let's see if you've separated the cards here, too. You turn them over, and you just spread them out. Mm. Now, no one knows that this is black and this right. is red. No one knows. No one even cares at this point. But you pull those two out, put them together, and as you flip them down, you change places. Mm -hmm. Boom. Red, black. You don't make a big deal out of that because by that time the trick is over, everyone's going, no way. <laughs> and then you just separate everything to make it really look, how did you do that? I didn't touch the cards. You did it. This will blow anyone's mind anytime.
You could do street magic anywhere, at a table, in a restaurant, or just standing in front of somebody. Let's take a look. Would you like my business card? Oh, absolutely. Okay, let me show you this. Look, we've got business cards. I actually, they're blank on both sides because I, uh, I only carry uh, blank stock. Look, I'm going to take one of them. Watch the card very carefully. I'm going to do this before your very eyes, okay? We've got a card here. Look, blank on both sides. I'm going to do this in slow motion. Look, one, two, watch, three. But they were blank. The rest of them still are, but that's how you wow. print a business card in your own hand. This is a way to give out your business card and everyone will remember it. So, here's how it's done. You've got a stack of your business cards. Half of them are face up like so, with all the printing on them, and half of them are face down, put together, so that you've got blank and blank. When you page through them at first, they're all blank on this side. You don't go as far as the middle. You just show the top few, then you turn them over, and you show the next view. And then you take one of them at random. You put these aside or back in your pocket, keep them away from everybody, and you say, now look. Now let me show you how to do this move. Watch how I show this card blank on both sides. Can you see it right there? Blank on that side, blank on that side. But I'm going to teach you how to do that. You're actually showing the same side twice. It's the illusion of turning the card over that you're going to create here. Here's how you do it. Lay the business card out over your hand, slanted towards you, a little bit of your front finger showing here, a little bit of your thumb underneath the card like so. You'll get really good at this. And then, in slow motion, I'm going to do it here. As you go to turn it, it's like this. Lever your thumb up and turn it and hold it only with two fingers. Did you get that? So it's like so in your hand. You're saying, okay, it's blank on this side and it's blank on this side and you show it because look you want to do it exactly the way that you would do it if you were normally just showing the business card you want to make it look exactly the same and that's what creates the illusion so if i was going to show this card blank on this side and blank on this side that's what i do see i just turn it over i grab it with two fingers and i show it on that side but what you're going to do is the illusion. The thumb comes just underneath right here and just twists it like that. Now watch when you watch it a little faster. It's blank on this side and blank on that side. Okay, so you just need to practice that over and over and over again with a business card and you'll get it, believe me. Okay, now the second part of this look is going to be right here. This is when you're going to turn the card over and it's going to look again like you turned the card over but you actually didn't, okay? Here's the way it looks to the person. You're going to take the card and push it through your hand like so. You're going to take the card again, push it through your hand like so. You're going to take the card again, push it through the hand, but this time it's got all the printing on it. Now let me show you that in slow motion. Here's what you're doing. You've got the card on your hand like so. You're going to go in a flat plane this way. So look at this. I'm bending around. No one can see the card. I turned my hand over, but I did not turn the card over. The card is going from here in an even plane, this way, and out. You just push it out with the thumb. Again, you put it on the front part of the fingers, even plane, push it through. The third and final time you do this, the card is going to go right here, not on the front tip of the fingers, but on the palm of the hand, and you actually do just turn it over. Jerk your hand back a little bit like that, push it through like you did something, and boom, it comes out with all the printing on it. Flick the card and say, Rosemary, there's my business card. That's great.
world of magic involves many things. You don't need a magic wand anymore, just your two hands and some everyday objects, like this. Okay, so I've got your shoelace. Yeah. Can I get your ring too? I'm not going to tell you what's after that, but... Okay, your shoelace and your ring, look. If I put the uh, lace on the ring like so, it's on there, right? There's no right. way that that ring is coming off that lace unless I actually take it and pull it off, right? Right. Okay, look. I'm gonna pull this on like so. Now, I'm going to do this in your hand, actually, okay? okay. Watch this. Now, we've got the uh, shoelace going through the ring like so. Now, watch. I'm going to put this on your hand. I want you to feel it. Hold your hand up flat so we can see it. I want you to see it right up to the last second, okay? Now look, close your hand. I want you to see this right to the last second. Hang on to that. We've got the ring on the rope tightly in your hand, right? Uh -huh. Watch. I'm going to do this from here. Look. You're going to feel this happen. Look. Now. Did you feel it? Open That's your hand. Something. No? <laughs> Could you do that again? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, we're gonna learn how to do the ring off the string, which is a total street magic effect. It's in your face, it's very, very visible, and it uses something that you borrow from other people, which is really cool. Now, the first time, you put the ring on the string twice, okay? You try to make it look exactly the same each time. The way you, anybody puts a ring on a string is they insert it like this, they grab it and they pull it through. Now look at the drag that that creates. See? It's like you're pulling. It doesn't just come easily. Okay? Then you're going to take the ring, you're going to hold it out and show that the rope literally goes right through the ring. Mm -hmm. You're going to pull it to the side and you're going to say, look, there's only one way to get that ring off of the string. And that is, and you take it back in the left hand the way you just had it, you take the rope with your finger and your thumb here so that you're all set to do it again the second time the same way you did it the first time. And the only way to take that off is to pull it off of one of the ends. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. And the person agrees. Now, the second time you do it, this is going to be pure sleight of hand. It does take some practice, but once you get it, it's very easy and it flows you're not really going to put the ring back on the string, but it's, you're going to give the illusion that you do. You've got the ring in your left thumb and forefinger. You've got the string curled down here and held by your little finger and your third finger. What you do is you're going to come under cover of your hand as you go to do that, and you're going to hook your thumb underneath like so. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to and this is still covering your hand here. You're going to pull this and look at the drag that I'm creating. See, by hanging onto the rope here, mm -hmm. I'm pulling it out towards the person like so, and it looks like it went right on. Exactly. Look, it comes around the outside. You're holding it on the inside of the ring like so, and you're holding it like that. No one can see down below because your fingers are covering it. So you don't want to go like that and expose it down here, and you don't want to show it down here. You put that finger in front. Uh -huh. But that's what you've got. Then, when you go to put it in the person's hand, like so, you just put, put it, your thumb straight over the ring, bend it down, and then you get it up like that so they can see that that's looking completely like it's still running through the ring, which is the beauty of this, because then you do it right up to the last second. You let them see that ring on the string as they close their hand. Then you can let go and from then on it's all acting. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, 
okay, I'm going to do this now. Watch. Mm -hmm. And you're like making the ring kind of melt in there. And then, because it's all bunched up around the ring, you get them to squeeze a little bit, and then when they pull it, what happens is, inside their hand, the ring releases, and it makes them feel like it just went right through the ring. Right. The person can literally feel it inside their hand do that. And that's the cool part about this. Okay? So, let's reiterate the key points here on this. The first time looks exactly like the second. You're putting it through, you are actually taking your thumb through, creating a drag, and literally putting the ring onto the string. Then you're holding this here, getting it in position, curling the fingers, finger and thumb, as you pull it off and you show them how it can only be taken off, and you've got it all ready with your thumb and forefinger. Then you do exactly the same motions, putting it in, but as the hand comes up to grasp it, the thumb is going underneath, clipping it, and look, you're creating a drag going out like this, and no one can see that, and it looks like it went through again. Mm -hmm. You're pulling it away from you like so, and then what you do is you adjust. You come back here, and you get that so that it's just like so. Your fingers are right in the middle of the ring, clipping it so no one can see, and it looks completely like you're coming back here. And it's, it's okay to take a little time, adjust it, uh -huh. Make sure everything's good, and then come out with it. Okay, you guys, let me show you one last time now how this looks with the, with the loop. You've got it threaded on. You've come up. You've created the drag. You've pulled it away from yourself. You've come down and adjusted it. What that actually looks like underneath your thumb is this. The string is curled around the ring. It doesn't actually go through it and the finger and the thumb are clipping it in here so that you can't see anything. And all it looks like is that the string is literally running right through. Mm -hmm. That gives the perfect illusion because the drag was created. You did it the same way as the first time right. and that reinforces exactly how it's done. Okay? Then again, you put it on their hand, pin it down so that everyone can see the rope going right through the string, and you tell them, I want you to feel this, so I'm going to hold it on your hand, and I want you to feel it. That gives you a reason for holding it on their hand. Then you have them slowly close their hand. You can have a couple of other people, if there are other people there as well, hold the other side of it. And then when you pull, that little bit slides out, and it makes them feel like, my God, it just came off the string.
we're going to learn some what's called in magic some flourishes. Flourishes are not actually magic per se, but if you weave them in with the magic, they look really pretty and they make you look like you have a lot of skill, which with some of the flourishes you do. Um, but some of them are a lot easier than you think. So you just have to keep practicing a little bit and then suddenly it clicks in. For example, this one I'm going to show you with a coin. It's called the coin roll. Now let me show you how to do it. It looks like this. You've probably seen this already in one of the other clips. So here's how you do it. You start with the coin on your thumb. Follow this and watch it over and over again, okay? Start with it balanced on your thumb. Fold your fingers in just a little and keep them nice and loose and relaxed. Then you're going to clip the coin right here and you're going to tip it over on top so it could just rest there if you wanted to leave it there. But then you're going to clip it, the next one, go over to there, you're going to clip it again, and then you're going to slowly let it fall underneath. And as it falls underneath, you're going to let it balance on the thumb. Bring your thumb over, let it balance, and push it right back up. Clip it, clip it, clip it, balance it, clip it, clip it, clip it, balance it. It takes a little, and at first, the coin is going to fall into your lap a million times. Make sure you do it over top of a table or something like that. But pretty soon, you're going to find, ooh, I'm starting to ooh, be able to do it. And then a little more practice, and pretty soon, you're just going really, really fast. And you can do it with both hands, then. You can practice with both hands. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is harder, and this is for only those who want to tackle it. Or you can start with the coin roll, and when you get good with that, you can try this other one. It's pretty hard, but you take four coins. You can use quarters, by the way, for any of this, or I've got 50-cent pieces. You can get them from the bank. You take the four with your forefinger and your thumb, and you're going to roll them out. Take three, take one off of that, bring this down, and take one off of that, and you've got all four. Okay, let me go over this from a different, a little bit different perspective. You've got that with your thumb and forefinger. You're going to take three, then two, then one. And it looks like it takes a great de degree of skill, and in some sense it does. Okay, so that's the second one. A little bit harder. Don't even tackle that if you don't feel up to it. Start with the coin roll, which is a really cool flourish. You can just stand there any time and do it, and people are going to say, what are you doing? And then you can do one of your tricks with coins. Okay, and then a couple of flourishes with cards we're going to teach you, which is really fun. You can walk into a card game with your buddies or with your friends or whoever and do a couple of these, and they're going to be amazed, and they're going to ask you to do a card trick. Okay, here's the first one, and it's a lot easier than you think. You take the cards, get a fairly new deck. Don't get sticky cards or plastic cards. Get a normal pack of cards and one that's fairly new to practice on. Take the cards and bevel them out like this a little bit. See the way they're slanted like that? And then you're going to put your forefinger, you hold the cards just like so, put your forefinger, put them down on the table. A cloth surface always helps, okay? And then you're just going to slowly release them and spread them at the same time. Apply pressure, medium pressure, until you've got a very nice line of cards. And then you can just pick this up with your hand, put your finger on top, and the cards, this looks so hard to do, and it's not. Once you've got them like this, it's like dominoes. You just keep moving your finger along, and they go all the way. You can let them fall into the other hand, scoop them up, or bevel the cards, spread them out again. You can go back the other way. You can go this way, back again, and then swoop them up like so. You're going to look like a real pro doing that one. Okay, here's the next one. We're going to teach you how to cut the cards with only one hand. This is actually pretty easy. It's like the coin roll. It just takes some practice. Don't get discouraged if at first you're dropping cards all over the place. I did. I dropped so many cards, you don't want to know about it, okay? So you take the cards like this. Thumb on top, two fingers on the bottom. Hold the cards in like a cage with your fingers at the end like this, locking them in. Do you see that? The little finger over here, the forefinger here, thumb on top. And then you're just going to drop half the cards right into the 
crotch of your thumb right there. And then you're going to push them up with the forefinger. See how they're going up until they clear the other and go right over top. So in practice, it's going to look like this. You're just holding the cards. They're secure. I'm not even going to drop them if I turn my hand over. Drop half, up, over. And you can get so good, you can just do it over and over again. People are going to think, wow. I mean, no one in a standard card game can cut the cards with one hand. It's worth the uh, little practice time it's going to take you to get that. Okay? And another thing is when you first start practicing it, maybe start with just a few cards. Start with half a deck. Drop half and go over. You'll find it a lot easier. Now here's the last one that we're going to teach you in this series. We're going to do a card fan, which is a beautiful um, flourish. It looks like this, okay? You just fan the cards out and you can show the people perfectly arranged. You can learn how to shut them. That's a little harder. This is the hardest one you'll have to do here. You're going to take the cards in your right hand like this. You're going to put your thumb in the middle at the bottom. Your forefinger is going to run with your closed fingers. Forefingers going pretty much across the middle of the deck. Okay? And then you're going to put them near the crotch of your thumb right here. Bevel them a little bit and just spread them around, applying pressure with your thumb so that they all just don't follow each other. That way they'll stay there. So you apply pressure and just spread them out. You can turn it over and like so. Okay? Did you get that? Once again, the key points there are to apply pressure with your thumb at the bottom of the pack right here. Your forefinger is going to be right across just about the middle, maybe a little lower. Bevel the cards and then just apply pressure with your thumb and spread them out. And you've got a beautiful fan to look at. People will really be amazed. Okay, that's the flourish section. Practice hard and learn your tricks. <laughs> I know. Good. Now, we're going to teach you how to levitate. Uh, a few inches off the ground, and there's some very careful points. It's actually very, very simple to do this, but very careful points that you have to um, acknowledge and, and follow in order for this to be an effective illusion. But it really is a reputation maker um, if you pick your, uh, the people that you're going to do it for and just let that grow. Okay. First of all, don't tell people what you're going to do here. You don't want them to be ready. Um, to be looking for the for the result, they don't know what you're going to do. Just take, tell them I'm going to do I'm going to do an illusion. I'm going to do something right now. It takes a lot of energy, and I and I have to I have to, I have to get ready. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That's always a good thing to say. And then you're going to turn. Very important to get the right angle on this. So if your audience is the camera, only do it for one, two, three people at a time. You don't want people spread out. You certainly don't want people behind you on this one. Okay. Very important for the angle. You turn a little bit away, put your feet together, okay? And you're going to angle a little bit away at a right angle from your audience as if you, you're going off by yourself to uh, get the energy going to be able to do this illusion. So you've, when you've got the angle and you're ready, put your hands out a little bit, bend your knees, and what you're actually going to do here is you're going to come up on your right foot behind the scenes, behind everything, so people can't actually see what you're doing. I'm going to turn around so that you guys can see exactly what happens here, okay? First of all, you've got your feet together, 
you're angled and your audience is now behind us over here. Your hands are out, your knees are bent a little bit, and what you're going to do is this. You're going to rise up slowly. When you've got your balance, you have to practice this. You are going to rise up, keeping your left foot up like so. So your left foot will not be on the ground like so. It's just going to come up like that as you go up. Now watch. I'm going to go up on my right foot, slowly, keeping my left foot bent. And then you go slowly go down, boom. And then you kind of widen your legs, you spread open. You say, and they're going to be, you tell them to watch your feet. Because you don't want them to miss anything. You want them to be watching your feet so they see you. And then you, you say, they'll be like this. How did you do that? And you and add one last thing and say, how high did I go? And put your hands out like this. And people swear later they remember that you went like this high off the ground because you're subliminally putting in that message. Okay, so let's go over the key points one more time here. Now look, the first one is the angle. Do you see how I'm angled away from you right here? So that when you go up, no one can see your other foot. You slowly go up like so and back down. The illusion takes place fairly quickly, okay? And remember to keep your left foot, you, the foot bent up like so, because that's what gives the illusion. See, when I go up, that foot is straight as if I was literally lifting off the ground. Okay, so that's the first one. Bend the knees, go up, go down. Don't tell people what you're going to do with this. And then come back down as if you landed. You've got to be a good actor here and say, Whew, how high did I go? Was that like, sometimes it's only a little bit, sometimes it's a lot. I can never, I, I never know. I'm just learning how to do this. And then just let them run with that. Let them soak in that illusion. They start telling people, this is going to make your reputation as a magic street entertainer, okay? You can do this with any deck of cards. We're going to take the Ace of Diamonds put it down on the on the uh, mat like that and look we're just gonna go like this and boom nine of clubs this is like a gambler's move how do we do that how do we put the ace down and in the process change the card this is cool and we're gonna learn how to do it Okay, guys, let's learn how to do the Ace of Diamonds into the Nine of Clubs or any cards that you want to switch. This is a really cool gambler's move, and it's been done throughout the ages, but only by the best gamblers. But I'm going to show you how to do it right now, okay? So what you've got here, you've got any deck of cards, okay? You've got the Ace of Diamonds. You've got the Nine of Clubs right behind it on the face of the deck. The grip is the most important thing. Now, look. You're going to hold this in what's called the card gambler's mechanics grip, which is with your thumb running right along that side, stopping by the index right here, forefinger on the front, and the other three fingers right here. With this corner, just digging into your palm of your hand. See, this way the deck is held securely. You can deal cards from there. It's, it's a, just a very nice look. Boom, boom, boom. Okay? Now, you've got the two cards. What you're going to do is this. From behind, when no one's really looking, you're just going to pry up two cards gently. On the other side, right here, you're going to catch what the, what's called a break. Okay, and you're going to have those two cards, look, one and two, held right here, tight, but with that, so that you can get to them. When you're ready to do the trick, you're going to pull the ace and the nine off as one card, a little less than halfway and a little jutting forward and this is a natural motion you're going to put the ace down on the table like so but because you've got two cards here as you turn the ace over I'm going to leave my hand up so you can see this but look 
as you turn it over, the ace is going to be pulled back like so, so that you've actually got the nine sticking out, which then you push against the table and push it out like that. Boom. You're left with the ace over here. You've got the nine of clubs on the table, and it's a very natural motion. It is the, this is the way someone would do it. If they were going to take a card here and just give it to somebody, they'd just do that. Well, that's exactly what you're doing, but you're doing the gambler's move to get rid of it. So let's go over that one last time. You have the ace. You've got it pried up with the nine right underneath. You're pulling it about halfway off. Jut it forward a little bit. As you're turning it, the thumb is pulling it back against the fleshy part of the hand right there. Perfectly try to square it up with the deck and push that nine out. And then you can take this, you can do anything you want with that ace later. Okay, there are various tricks you can do. But that's how we switch a card. That's one of the many ways to switch a card in this uh, art we call card magic. Probably the only thing in our whole uh, street package that will involve you getting something from a magic store. And you really have to get it from a magic store because uh, you can't find it anywhere else. And what it is is invisible thread, it's called. So all you do is you look in the yellow pages, get a magic store. You can even go online and find some magic store and just order it. It costs like eight bucks. Uh, some in, a little packet of invisible thread. The problem is you never know if they actually sold it to you because it's invisible. Now, it's not really invisible. Now, look, I have put a, a white paper here in the attempt and the effort to get you to see this thread and how small it is. I don't know if you can see it right there moving. It's attached to the dollar bill in the middle and then attached to two little pieces of wax which you can also get for like a couple of dollars. You can get a little packet of magician's wax, which it's then going to attach to your thumbs. And I'll show you how to do this because it's such a cool trick. Okay, so what you do is you get your thread. You take about maybe a foot, maybe to 14 inches. You attach a little piece of wax. Just wrap it around the thread right there and kind of wad it up to that end. A little piece of wax over here onto this end and a little piece of wax pinning the thread to the middle of the dollar bill because you don't want it to jiggle around and move around too much. You want to control that. Then you're going to take the dollar bill, wrap it up around the thread. The thread is now in the middle and you've got your two pieces of wax on either side. You're going to take this piece of wax and put it on this thumbnail. See the way you can barely see that? Then you're going to take this piece you're going to put that on that thumbnail, and it sticks. It's sticky wax. It's great. Then you've got this between. See, most people think that if you're levitating something, you must have a wire going from the ceiling to that thing, pulling it up. But this is not the case often with magic. Usually, it's spread out horizontally. Now, look. What you're going to do is you're going to start by just setting it on someone's hand, have them hold it out farther from them. Try to wear a dark 
shirt, something like that behind because it's even harder. It's almost impossible to see it anyway, but it's even harder to see the thread if you've got a dark something or something with a pattern on. It breaks it up, okay? Then you start like this. You've got this, look how I can move it this way, I can move it this way. Very difficult to see it, but you start by just leaving the thread loose, moving your hands around, and you say, come on, come on. See, I can turn my hands in like this, I can turn them out like that. It looks like everything's moving. I can go over top. I can do any of that. And then when you're ready to, you just very slowly and subtly pull back until it's tight and start making it move a little bit. See that? Just so it's jerking. Very slightly. You barely have to move. Even as you slightly shake your hands, it just moves itself. You can pull it move your hands slightly up or your thumbs only move it slightly up and it just moves up it looks like it's being controlled by a mysterious force and then the best thing to do is curl your hands inward move your fingers pull your thumbs back a little bit like this and get it to actually levitate and rise up just slightly before it goes back down and then move your hands around again and then what you can do is you can just take it, pull it off the thread, or you can just say, I'll tuck that away for later. Okay, you got that? Now let me give you one other way to present this, which is really cool that I like because it's so natural. I'm not going to actually do it, but I'm going to explain it, okay? Like let's say that you're in a bar or maybe you're even on the street. It's great to do this just on concrete or, or, or sitting down around somewhere. What you do is you just take the dollar bill and you say, look, I'm going to show you something really weird. Sometimes I can do this and sometimes I can't. And you, you just bend down and you just throw the dollar down on the, on the concrete and you just say, watch. And you have your hands close to it and it's down there, it's on the concrete. And then you're looking at it and you kind of move your hands and you just, you keep saying, sometimes I can do this and sometimes I can't look. And then you just pause and you just get it to start. And already people are like, they can't believe it. And then you just get it to move a little bit, a little bit more. Move your hands around. You have to experiment with what looks good. And then you can again get it to rise up. Move around. Rise up just a little bit. You don't want a lot. You don't want to walk around with it floating and back down. And you're saying, cool, it worked. I can do that with a dollar bill. Hey, thanks for the dollar. And then walk off with the dollar. Okay? Way to make extra money. Pay for your magician's wax and your invisible thread.